hello. Um, decided to come on here and um, I got my records from Deaconess today. I called all of my hospitals that I was either inpatient or whatever today to um, see if I can get my medical records. I still haven't heard anything back from Memorial yet. That does not surprise me. So far Deaconess really easy. Got the uh, authorization or whatever and then they sent me um, a copy via, via email. And um, yeah, I was going through it a little bit earlier uh, uh, today, right, right before I got off work. And I uh, haven't really delved into it too much, but it is kind of, the Deaconess stay was definitely one that was like the most uh, exciting because like a lot of a lot of um, eventful stuff happened because that's when I was doing my ECT. So, uh, Kimber's female who initially presented to Memorial Hospital Emergency Department on five twenty of twenty one via police. It was noted. That an anonymous call was made in regards to her welfare due to suicidal statements she had posted on social media earlier in the day. The patient reportedly states plans to overdose. <clears throat> that feels like that's been the old, um, from day one. It feels very generic. Uh, plans to overdose jump in front of traffic jump in front of traffic or use a gun. She had been researching how to purchase a gun. I I was researching how to purchase a gun? What research is involved? Jesus Christ, what what was this Kimber like? It was also noted that the patient had been collecting Lexapro and Amitripoline. Lexapro and Amitripoline. Do I even have that now? I was on Lexapro back then. What was the amitriptyline? Is that a sleeping pill? I think it was a sleeping pill. It's not what I take now though. You don't think. Patient was sending messages to her doctor via patient portal on Wednesday, 519. Inquiring about the lethality of the different medication she has medication she has. Patient posted on Facebook on Thursday 520 her disappointment that her question was not being answered. She believes someone saw the post and called 911. Police responded to her home but she was at work. She reportedly spoke to them via ring doorbell. According to patient she thought there was an understanding that she would go to the hospital evaluation after work which I remember this. Like, I thought, I thought so. However, police showed up to her work 15 minutes later and accompanied her to an emergency department for evaluation. The patient was observed looking around the room for ways she could harm herself. Reported wanting options of what she could potentially use. She stated her significant other died by suicide July 7, 2020 and has been struggling with grief and guilt since states that these emotions have been building in the last months and states that if things have not approved by January 7th, 2021, she will act on her suicidal thoughts. The patient was admitted to Behavioral Health Unit at Memorial Hospital on 5 2021 with little improvement in mood or decrease in suicidal thoughts slash plan. ECT had been recommended. This is the fucked up part. Patient has verbalized agreement with this plan. Yeah, because what else was I fucking going to do? Oh, we switch, we, we put you on maybe, um, how long was I fucking there? A couple of days? We'll put you on, um, a different med and, uh, oh, that's not, hmm. It seems like it's not working. I guess you might be just... It's not working. Do you want to try ECT? 
because uh, the one medicine's not working, and I, I guess we're just not going to prescribe you anything else. It's fucked up. You know what? I think that the hospital as a whole got some kind of kickback for how many people they would send to ECT, how many people they can sign up under Dr. Roden's plan or whatever, care. As long as it's just out of their fucking hair, because they were, t they, they were, oh, this was probably day three or day four by then, so they don't know what to do. Better put electrodes on her head and make her have a seizure and that seems like the right thing to do, right? Never been impressed. Never been impressed with um, with the hospital as a whole. Oh, that's nice. They do like little exams after um, after they zap your brain and uh, make you have like a, a mini seizure, and then they they do little physical exams, make sure that like oh, did we. We didn't uh, cause any damage here or there, did we? Oh. Nope, we're good. Thanks, Roten. Charles Roten. No longer living. Died in 2023. He's a nice guy. Always funny. Always joked about... He would always joke about... Because I always said that... Because um, I love going under... I love going under anesthesia. And I express that love to him. And uh, he's, you know, he would always say like, this is the part that she loves. It's time for your beauty sleep. Um, stupid stuff like that. But no, fucking anesthesia, going under anesthesia, man. If I, if I can get the fucking hook up, if I could go... If I could go out daily, like, it'd be so great. You just go under and then you just, and then you're just all of a sudden back. I don't know. The prep work was always my favorite because they would, um, prep, you know, with the IV and stuff, and then I remember be really early in the morning because she had to be there like when the hospital opened when um same day surgery would open so um and then they would they would put the IV and then they would put a little bit of um I feel like they would pump a little bit of saline or something or some kind of solution but it was always really cold and it always felt like death in your veins it was like so cold. Kimber Rose White Kim presents. As a somewhat confused historian, I like that. A somewhat confused historian. As she just had ECT treatment this morning, she has also been cutting upper legs. This is um. This is stuff I don't remember. Don't remember cutting. Somewhat. Patient has, a, patient has also been cutting up her legs. Thigh has fresh wounds from the past 24 hours. She tells me that she feels that her daughter has grown distant from her. She acknowledges feeling hopeless and worthless. She states that since her daughter has laughed, laughed. Now this is definitely like talk, to talk predictive text, which is not uncommon with when people are putting in notes in the healthcare field. Um, I just think that's funny. She states her daughter has laughed. She lives in the house alone, which is increasing her anxiety and stress. Patient has a history of suicidal suicide attempts. A history of suicide attempts. Patient has a history of sexual abuse. I was hearing this a lot last week. 
patient presents as guarded with flat affect. Response is delayed. Patient rates their depression an 8. Reports hearing voice of dearly departed. Last had auditory hallucination today morning was able to distract herself. She says she is from Jasper and works as a shipping clerk at a warehouse called Stins. What is this, my autobiography or something? Stated mom and dad is still alive and has one brother and one sister. Has one daughter who is 20. Aubrey has have a pretty good relationship with daughter. Daughter has recently moved out. Reports she is not dealing with it in the healthiest way. States stated it is a little difficult adjusting with daughter moving out. Has some good friends. Tries to call daughter at times. Stated daughter is getting tired of me going to the hospital I guess. That was a direct quote from me. Couldn't tell. Reports thoughts of wanting to hurt self on and off. Stated, if I wasn't in here, I would probably overdose. And stated that she has access to medications such as trazodone and pain pills. Patient, re patient reports she has recently been on a Facebook dating website and quote might have made some bad choices patient reports telling her friend she felt suicidal and her friend called the Jasper police whom took her to Jasper ER during assessment it was discovered patient had not been taking her medications correctly I don't know this has all been really boring, and I apologize. It was more or less just for me. I just kind of wanted to go through, and now Nelson is being really clingy, and I guess I'll just get the... <sighs> Give me something to eat beside your hair. Anyways, goodbye.